Hi guys, welcome to the second part of this uh, environment tutorial video. If you haven't watched part 1, you can use the link in description and see how I make this environment from scratch. Part 1 will include modeling, UV unwrapping and texture painting with paint system add-on. So in part 1, we ended the video by painting light and shadow colors, but uh, the environment was still toon shaded, which means uh, most of the colors are just flat. There is no painterly, there are no painterly brush strokes or no imperfections. So in this video, I'm going to take uh, the painting further by rendering this environment even more by adding imperfections and by also adding these variations in shadows, as you can see in this uh, in this video. So to paint this environment, I'm not really using any reference images, but I would highly recommend using reference images if you are not sure how you want to paint your environments. And uh, if there is any particular art style that you want to follow, then references would definitely help you out. And I would highly recommend using Pinterest if you're looking for your reference images or even artworks that you want to learn from, Pinterest can really help you out. So here in this video, I'm just uh, adding a bunch of brush strokes and, and adding a lot of imperfections to make this environment look more natural and interesting. And I'm also trying to make the shadows more realistic because, uh, because we used Eevee to, to get the base shadow colors and the light colors. If you remember in the part one, we actually used Eevee and, and then we painted the, the shadows over the, over the blender lighting. So if you want your shadows and uh, if you want your lighting to be more realistic, maybe you can also use cycles instead of EV and that would really make the environment even more interesting. And maybe I'll try that in my future videos. So yeah, give it a go and see if you find it interesting. So later on in this video, we are going to actually use crease pencil outlines for this environment after we finish up this painting. And then we are also going to use crease pencil to draw these, uh, you know, these, uh, these sketchy lines to make it look more like a 2D artwork instead of a 3D environment. And after that, I'm going to use crease pencil object to make some 2D elements like, uh, like stars and clouds and I will also animate them. So I'll see you later in this video after we finish up this painting and we'll take this video further.
Okay, so now we have finished up with the painting. Now let's turn off the wireframe so we can actually use the crease pencil outlines. To do that, first we have to set up this camera and make sure it covers the whole scene. You can go to the camera option and change the focal length and also play with the clipping to make sure your environment does not clip into the background. Once you're satisfied with how the scene looks through the camera, now we can add grease pencil scene line art. To get the outlines, you can go to the modifier tab and also change the thickness of the outlines. And the outlines are looking decent, but I'm going to use a grease pencil object to draw the lines now. To do that, I'm using a grease pencil stroke object. And now let's go to draw mode. and choose surface option and uh, and choose an offset value for this environment first I'm using 0.05 and now see if the grease pencil lines stick to the surface if they don't change the offset value and decrease it maybe use 0.01 and see if it sticks now now I'm just going to use a lot of sketchy lines around this environment so when it comes to drawing these sketchy lines in this 3D environment, I, I just usually, I usually try to draw lines along the edges to emphasize the, to emphasize the shape. And I also do a lot of doodling and add these random objects, random shapes and try to see if it's looking interesting. There are actually a lot of 2D artists who, who actually do this with their artworks. They would use a lot of lines to emphasize the shape and also do a lot of doodling in their artworks and it somehow looks really interesting so that's actually that is exactly what i'm trying to do here with 3d environments so it's actually really random but i'm also trying to see if it is looking interesting if it does not look interesting if something looks off i just undo it and there isn't uh, any <laughs> any secret to this it is just me being a little playful and just uh, drawing things that that comes to my mind there isn't really any any trick to it so after i'm done with these crease pencil lines i will later see you in this video and we will draw some 2d elements like crease pencil stars and clouds and we will also animate them so i'll see you later So here I'm using this 3D cursor to get this crease pencil object right above this environment. So I'm using this uh, 3D cursor for stroke placement and the side plane as my drawing plane. And then I just start drawing these stars. Make a bunch of shapes and a few stars. But it does look like if it's a, it's in a one plane so I'm going to move them back and forth to make it look as if they are in, in space and are at a distance from each other. And after drawing the stars now I'm going to separate these, these uh, star objects. To do this select the points that you want to separate and then press P and click on selected points to make the star a separate object. Now after separating these star objects, I'm going to rename them in the scene collection on the right side by double clicking. 
on their names. Now repeat the same process with the other stars. Separate them first and then rename them in the scene collection. So after finishing this, now I'm going to animate the camera. To do this, just uh, take out the timeline from the bottom and and then go to the first frame and press I to to keyframe the current location and then go to a distant frame and move the camera to the position you want to choose and press I again to keyframe that location. So when you play the animation, you can see the see the camera moving from the previous position to the next position. So this is how I animate the camera. So after animating the camera, now I'm going to animate the star objects. To do this, first uh, select the star object, right click and then select origin to geometry. Now after this, get the slider on the first frame in the timeline and press K and select location and rotation. Now get the slider to a distant frame and rotate the star and then press K and select location and rotation again. So now when you play the animation you can see the star rotating as well as the camera is moving around. So now I'm going to repeat the same process and animate the other star as well. First to get the origin to geometry. Now press K and select location and rotation to make your first keyframe. And then once again go to some distant frame and, and rotate your star. This time I'm using X axis so I'm rotating the star around the X axis. And, and then once again press K and select location and rotation to keyframe the star again. So now when you go to the first frame and and play the animation you can see the both of the stars moving as well as the camera is moving around just animate all the other stars quickly along different axes so it looks more interesting and does not look repetitive now let's add another grease pencil object grease pencil stroke object for the clouds i'm using this 3d cursor and trying to place it at some distance so that we can draw some clouds which which will be moving in the background after placing the 3D cursor, go to draw mode and go to material option and select this gray material at the bottom, uncheck the stroke option, go to the fill option and, and change the color to white and then start drawing in the background. Make sure you go to layer panels and layer panel and uncheck the light so that lights do not affect the crease pencil strokes. Now draw some clouds and to animate the clouds, I'm going to repeat the same process like we did with the camera. I'm going to animate the clouds with their position. So just change the position and press I to keyframe the current position and this way you can animate the clouds. So now we have the stars rotating, clouds moving and the camera animated as well. 